press news agency. Um, whoever wants to answer this one, did you really think Minister Fantino would have a different message for you when the Prime Minister stood in the House of Commons and no. basically said that the services are fine and they're no, going to care? No, no. To answer your question, no. I mean, we were all hoping for 11th hour re re resolution, right? But we knew in our hearts that it wasn't going to happen. We knew that the decision was made, and we're just trying to uh, relay our messages that the closures are wrong. That's all. We wanted to ensure that the Minister Mantino and the Prime Minister knew the decisions was wrong to close all these offices. These nine offices that don't have uh, anybody, uh, takes too long to travel to the next office. Right? I mean, we have a lot of issues where Newfoundland, you have to travel eight hours, nine hours. Manitoba, you could go from two to eight hours also, depending on where you live, because the outlying communities are too far away from where these offices used to be. And it's also not just military veterans, but the RCMP also are involved with this too, because they have also veterans associations across the country, and they're a vested interest in this also. Follow up. Yeah. Yes. Where does it go from here? Is it? <laughs> we'll see. I think uh, um, to go from here is we, we the system's broken, and there's no denying that the system's broken, and we need uh, a, a complete reorg of Veterans Affairs. Um, I'm going to make an analogy here. Um, I hope it's not off too off topic, but. Um, when we uh, went to Afghanistan, the political pundits and the generals said that there needed that there was no infrastructure and that everything was was broken and that that it would take a generation to fix this problem. Well, I'm telling you right now, it's going to take a generation to fix the problem of veterans affairs, and in that generation, thousands of veterans are going to be the casualties. Um, the fact that I can make draw an analogy to 2002 Afghanistan to our veterans affairs. Is, is disgusting, and it shouldn't have to happen. So I'm just calling upon the, any party to fix the problem, uh, anybody. Like if you've got a solution, then I, I kind of would like to hear it because right now I've, I can't see one in, in sight. <clears throat> right. I didn't. I didn't get a chance to talk to Mr. Fantino at all. I didn't say a word to him. Um, I would. I would welcome a meeting with him at a future date. Um, however, the the online problems that these VAC accounts are. I mean, these these problems are supposed to be solved by tomorrow, and I don't see them being solved anytime soon. So, I would just, you know, I'd like to point that out that we need these these problems to be solved uh, in the next, you know. 24 hours. <clears throat> Just for your information, this young man who has a PayPal and anything you can imagine with the web, he's not a, a savvy IT, but uh, he can navigate through the web. He took half a day to complete his, his data. So if you go to a Service Canada office, and they bring you to a computer. How much time do you think it will take a veteran to complete his form? At 92 years old or at 85 years old or if you suffer from PTSD, do you think that's right? I don't think that's right. You pick up the phone, you'll wait 20 minutes on the phone. If you know about PTSD, won't be able to wait that long on the phone. You'll hang up and then you'll say, forget about it. And that's exactly what the government wants. They want the veterans to forget to go to them. And that's not right. I'd like to add to that because I'm in that level. And I think I asked anybody a question of going to the phones now and try to get some information not just the Veterans Affairs, but anybody, you have to bring your lunch because it takes going from one system to another 
to get what you want, eventually that veteran is going to say, to hell with this, I'll let, let my next 10 years go the way he's been going, and he's satisfied. And I thank him for that. Is there any other questions? Do we have anybody on the phone? Okay, here's another problem with the phone. Maybe you've got to try something new. Yes, I'll just take a few minutes. I think there was a question there, but... You are looking at a group of veterans and some union members from PSAC who have just emerged from a verbal confrontation with the Veterans Affairs Minister, Julian Fantino. No statement from Minister Fantino. The man speaking right now is Bruce Moncour. He's a vet of Afghanistan. Let's listen in to his thoughts. He's very, very frustrated with the government's closure of aid offices. Meeting with the Prime Minister, I guess. Uh, Jacques Fout. I can't say these names. Fautou. Uh, Lori Hahn. And uh, uh, Eric O'Toole. Those are the ministers that met us in that earlier meeting. Tell you uh, they told us pretty much, yeah. The, they 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 listened to our uh, what we had to say, and we went back and forth. Uh, it was we met with the liberals and we went with the uh, NDPs, and I must say that they were a lot more uh, hospitable than the conservatives were. So. <clears throat> And I'd just like to add to that, um, no, we weren't expecting a reversal of the decision. We were hopeful, but the least we were expecting was for these uh, fine gentlemen behind me to be treated with courtesy and respect, and we did not get that from Minister Fantino this afternoon. Right. Uh, the young veteran that just spoke, as I say, Bruce Moncour, uh, he's born in Windsor, 22 years old, when he was accidentally strafed by an American A-10 warthog during Operation Medusa in Afghanistan. Um, so these are vets from World War II. Uh, Roy Lamore, you saw, he's a World War II. This is uh, Ron Clark. Let's listen in to Mr. Clark, um, who had demanded the resignation of Julian Fantino. Let's listen in to him. With an iPod, well... Uh, at that time, I had no clue what an iPod was. I thought that was something that came out of the sky and it was in a, you know. And uh, he showed us how to get onto the iPod. Uh, but he said the, there's two apps that refer to post-traumatic stress disorder. And, of course, I didn't have a clue what apps meant either. So I had to have that explained to me. And... Uh, in order to get the apps, he had to do it for me. I couldn't do it, and neither could my compadre. So anyway, he pushed the apps, and uh, a telephone rings. And uh, this lady answers, and she says she's with some medical service. Um, I said, oh, hi. Uh, uh, there's two gentlemen here, uh, myself and another man, and uh, we're suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and we need help. And uh, she said, okay, sir, she said, uh, uh, I can get a counselor to you uh, in 48 hours. And I said to her, well, if I was outside right now with a, with a rope tied around a tree, with a loop in the other end waiting to put it around my neck, what the hell do I do then? The phone went dead for about 20 seconds. And finally, she said, phone 911. Okay. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, certainly, the Public Service Alliance of Canada will continue to support and work with these veterans to ensure that they get the services that they need and they require because they certainly deserve better. Right, you have thank looked you. at an extraordinary press conference, a group of veterans who came to Parliament Hill today to protest the closure of eight offices, Veterans Affairs offices across this country. Then they had a meeting with the Veterans Affairs Minister Julian Fantino. Apparently, according to their side, it did not go well. There was a hello, there was a verbal altercation, and then the vets emerged incredibly unhappy. They also met with three MPs, including, they say, Lori Hahn, who's a vet himself, and Aaron O'Toole, who was on this program earlier, also a vet. Uh, they said it was a very unproductive meeting. Uh, they do not want these closed, these uh, offices, and obviously that's controversial, but they feel insulted. 
One vet said he was crying he was so upset. Uh, one said he will now start a political campaign against the government. Another said that uh, Mr. Fantino should resign immediately. We have asked Mr. Fantino for a statement as to what happened there, why he didn't meet with them longer, or what happened in that alleged verbal altercation. We'll find out. Um, we heard from vets from World War II uh, and vets from the Afghanistan conflict about this. Now, let me show you a map about what this is all about. Taking place this week will be closures that will take place right across the country from east to west. And there are these from Cornerbrook, Newfoundland, Charlottetown, Sydney, Nova Scotia on the east coast, to Thunder Bay and Windsor in Ontario. And then they'll go right across uh, the country to uh, right across to the west coast there in Kelowna and Saskatoon and Brandon.